going on everyone we're just going to be doing a little quick uh, tutorial here on how to figure out the hardware insert delays when you are trying to offset your hardware in Pro Tools so when you have a when you have an interface that's going in and out of itself to go into Pro Tools to use as a hardware insert there is a little bit of delay that gets introduced so this video today is just going to talk about how did I configure this uh, configuration to to find out what these what the hardware insert delay information is right so I, I already figured out that 2325 was what it was uh, 23.25 milliseconds is what it was for the RME but I got a Rosetta 800 and I love it and I wanted to also use that for hardware inserts and I had to configure that as well. So I did find out that it is 2364 um, in my particular case situation but obviously um, your results may vary on contingent on different factors. I have a UF, UFX, Army UFX interface. Um, but moving forward it's just real important. I just want to just note that you do need to make sure that your when you are doing your hardware inserts and Pro Tools, they have to be the same channel. So in and out. So basically, in this particular case situation, the um, we're using the RME um, output three and the RME input three. It basically creates a loop. In, into itself and that's where it's really important that you make sure that you do have that configured correctly we're going to talk about that in another video um, and again another thing I do want to mention is that when you have your buffer when you change your your sample rate um, your buffer size um, so you know you want to make sure that you have it set to 1024 or as high as your interface will allow you to because whenever you're going to be using hardware inserts that's after you're done tracking you're not going to be screwing around right because each time you do this it's going to change so you're going to have to change your hardware insert delay for each buffer size and you don't want to do it um you know you don't want to accidentally do this on like two well 256 isn't, isn't bad but i mean you know if your system can handle that but um to me for me I, t I typically track in 64 so there's no latency and i'll mix in 1024 so again i'm just doing it in 1024 that's all i'm ever going to really use my hardware answers for so that's what i'm configuring this for but i just want to make sure you know that when you do this you have to make sure that you are um uh, you are um completely sure that that that's the buffer size that you want to be configuring it for because it will change it's not going to be the same those harbor insert delay values are going to change so again we're we're keeping ours at 1024 for this example so now that that's out of the way let's talk a little bit of the configuration so i already um i already have calibrated this particular uh this this here this that's labeled top this is the the RME hardware and this bottom is the bottom of the cush which is actually going into the um, going in and out of the Rosetta so this is our baseline here um, this is what we are comparing to this is the the raw data we'll call it that right so this is the raw data with that we just introduced and we want to make sure that when this when these hardware inserts are being used that there is going to be as little latency as possible to prevent phasing and all that stuff right so what i did in this particular case situation is i like this i love snares for this so they're just because what you're going to do is you're we're going to be matching the wave okay so we match the wave this is again our baseline so we just got a snare i'm not sure how well you're going to hear this but because um, I don't have the out routed at this particular moment. I just want to do a quick video, but you, the USB microphone will pick it up. So you have that 
little signal generator. Um, when you do the signal generator, I like to have a couple so you can kind of fine tune it, right? Um, for the signal generator, I like to have the square wave. Um, this isn't really a tutorial on how to do that, but I will show you how I did that. You basically just go into your audio. So you just basically have to select a little place in your track, and then you go to other under audio suite. You go to signal generator. You pick the square wave, and I like to kind of go down. So, so once you're at that frequency, I like to go down a little bit, and then I will just render that, and boom, there it is, right? But I already did that earlier, so but I just wanted to show you how to do that. So again, a, a couple uh, transients, some shapes, so that you can. What's really nice about the square wave is you could really, you know, hone in on there. You can make it bigger or smaller or whatever, and that's really good when you start to measure, right? Because sometimes there's going to be a little degradation to that waveform, and in those case situations, I mean, you want to make sure that you um, you're going to be lining this up as as close as possible All right so again we already did this for the the top we knew works this is the RME the R just so you know when you, when you are doing this into your compressor you want to have the mix all the way down you want to have the outputs and the inputs all the way down on the actual compressor you're not looking to smash anything or color it you don't have to do that you just want to put signal through it that's all you want to do is just put signal through it so that we can see how much uh, delay is introduced from that loop when you're going um, in and out of the interface or in this case we already measured that we want to figure out what it's what ADA what kind of what type of um, what kind of delay is ADA introducing and it it is introducing a little bit more delay which is understandable because it is it does have to do a little bit more with that um, with the, the light pipe so it's not directly attached to the interface but with that said um, again there was a couple of videos that showed how to do this but I didn't really love the way that I, I think they're great but they kind of went into a tangent and how to do a certain way and I, I felt that this way was so much easier for me um, you can measure you know and look at the length and you know get the milliseconds is you know you know configure your your um you know your transport window so forth and so on to, to figure out what that is but I didn't, I didn't like that right maybe maybe you can do that just to kind of get in the ballpark because you're not going to know what you what you're going to be messing around with but you literally can just go into this um setup io for this hardware answer delay you could literally just keep plugging in numbers until you get close to it but that will take a little bit longer but what i like to do um so again you keep you create your your test subjects so we want this is our baseline here so this right here is our baseline we're just going to change this track yellow so you know that's our baseline so this is basically the raw audio that i dragged in here i created a i dragged these samples in it's a snare which is great this is just some random you know sound effect and this is a signal generator square right so i kind of like to start with the with the snare to start off with to kind of just get those transients and then i'll dial it in a little bit more with the square i don't really even, didn't even use that <laughs> this one for this particular one but i do like having different sounds because i always like to check and see how that you know how does it line up and making sure or whatever so uh that is basically the general idea here but let me tell you how I'm routing this. So you create your your audio input. Uh, you cr create your track, right? So you just would create basically an audio track. So I'm not going to do it now, but you create a mono audio track, and then you put your samples in there, and um, and then you're going to create uh, another audio track for the signal that eventually gets printed onto, and then you create a um, an aux input. All right, so basically audio, a couple audio tracks, and then an aux, right, depending on what you're actually doing. So, but in this particular case situation, so this, all you do is you create the, the track and you put two auxes on there, right? You create two aux sends. And these aux sends, 
you want to make sure that you have the you know the fader all the way up so you just alt click it on a PC and uh, basically you're going to be sending that aux into an auxiliary um, track right so here is the apogee right again we already did the army we know that input three yeah i'm sorry insert three which is army in and out three right army three in and army three out uh, we could always do a video on that later but uh, let's just try to stick to this for today we take that um hardware with that auxiliary mono track we create the insert so again my insert and it, which is 17 this is the apogee i then because again so this is just your standard aux so again aux 2 we're sending that to this aux channel which the input is aux 2 we put the insert here and then what we're going to do is we send the output into a, that, that new track right and then that input is the output of the aux all right sometimes it gets a little confusing when you're talking sends and outputs but again it, it's pretty self-explanatory when you kind of get the idea what you're doing is you have your raw signal you're sending it into an aux and then you're putting the hardware insert onto that particular aux track and the output of that is essentially i guess you could be call it busts to the this audio track and this is the Again, this is the, the input is the is would be the bottom here, which is the bottom cush, and the um, and the output here is just our standard output, right? And again, I did mention in this particular um, example with the cushions, we are doing the um, the mixes all the way down, input all the way down. We just want to get a signal through there. So what I did is I just basically I'm just gonna I just willy nilly um, you know kind of started doing this and so for this all i do is i just record enable the track and then maybe i don't even see the whole thing here and then i'm just i just basically look in here and i say oh, okay well this isn't really let's make this a little you know you can fine tune things and like when you look at this wave this first uh hit here you see like whoa like this is this is the baseline here this is what we're comparing it to. This is the RME. We already did this. And as you can see, um, these peaks and troughs, there's going to be a little signal degradation. So it's not going to always be exact, but this is basically, um, this is as close that I was able to get. I like to go to like the peaks. See how that peak matches? And then that peak matches. You get as much as you can. Obviously, this was not matched up at all, right? And you could also, if you wanted to, to go into the... Um, the square wave you can see like yeah this thing's way would be way out of phase so well, what, what I did was I was like okay well I created a couple playlists here and what I did was I compared them all to to this one right here so obviously this one is is no good right but I looked and I was like all right well let's see which one's which one closer and each time I do it I label it right so all you do is just double click on the wave and it allows you to name it you can name it whatever you want you hit enter and then now this particular you could see it there it's now it has a name right i just named it name but basically that's what you do and you go look at it all until you find the one that matches up and for my case situation i did end up finding out uh, what the actual measurement was by by just looking and comparing it to the other waves and recording it and i found that 2364 hardware insert delay for the Apogee is what ends up um, getting us as close to close to that wave as possible and then boom so if you look here now that we finally changed that see these peaks are perfect so again the Kush has a little signal uh, degradation I'm sure each one will will not look identical either but look there you go peaks and troughs are matching so that's basically it i just wanted to show you and again you just basically look you know you look and say oh you know 22 milliseconds 
23 milliseconds, 23.55 milliseconds, and you do it that way.